Units of all troops chased terrorists Al Qadam and Al Asali neighborhoods and killed scores of them. Al Jafari affirms that the states which allege defending human rights are the same sides that grant Israel an illegal immunity for its crimes and occupied Arab land. Haider discusses with Latsis and Gay the New Observer's mission and the mechanism of cooperation between the government and the mission on the ground. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our news for today. Units of our armed forces continue to chase remnants of armed terrorist groups in different parts of Damascus suburbs, clashing with terrorists in Al Qadam and Asali quarters, killing and wounding large numbers of gunmen. The Syrian armed forces continue to pursue armed terrorist groups in the neighborhoods of Al Qadam and La Sali in Damascus, engaging the mercenary terrorists and inflicting heavy losses upon them. We came here in reply to the request of the citizens to help them get rid of the armed terrorist groups. Our armed forces will continue to cleanse the area of all the terrorists and we are ready to sacrifice our blood for the sake of protecting the homeland. You have been covering our activities and you saw how we liquidated them. We pledge to our citizens that we will not stop until we pure the area from the terrorism. We are here to destroy the terrorists. We have attacked them and we are quite determined that we will wipe them out. Those armed gangs are terrorizing the citizens and they are attacking the public and private properties. However, our citizens remain keen upon supporting the army and defeating the terrorism. The clashes resulted in the killing of a large number of terrorists and the arrest of others. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar al-Jafari, has referred to the attempts by certain sides to cover up the failure to find a solution to the Arab-Israeli conflict due to Israeli intransigence through imposing other topics on the discussions of this provision with a view of weakening its known references. Al-Jafari was delivering Syria's statement during the open ordinary session held by the UN Security Council yesterday to discuss the provision entitled The Situation in the Middle East. He said Syria has conveyed to the UN Secretary General and the members of the UN Security Council complaints related to Zionist violations of international legitimacy resolutions and the policy of Russian racial discrimination and suppression against Syrian citizens and the occupied Syrian Golan that included building a segregation wall in the Golan East of Majal Shams village. Al Jafari also referred to some futile attempts to deal a blow to the Syrian Lebanese relations, affirming the, at the same time the strength of these relations. He welcomed the measures taken by the Lebanese official authorities to monitor joint borders. Russia's permanent representative to the UN, Vitaly Chilkin, has affirmed Russia's principled stance towards the Syrian crisis and its call for speeding up a peaceful settlement through national dialogue between the government and the opposition without foreign intervention. During the UN Security Council session, Chilkin said his country was ready to host possible negotiations between the representatives of the Syrian government and the opposition in Moscow. He added that Russia notified the UN of its readiness to send 30 military observers to take part in the UN Monitor's mission in Syria. State Minister for National Reconciliation Dr. Ali Haider discussed with the UN Under Secretary for Peacekeeping 
operations, Harvey Latsis, and head of the UN mission in Syria, General Bebak Gay, the mission of UN observers in Syria following one month extension. Mechanisms of cooperation between the ministry and the UN team, especially the prospects of political reconciliation in the country. Dr. Haider said in a statement to the press following the meeting that he discussed with the UN mission the true intention and seriousness of observers to make available 10,000 Syrian volunteers of high qualification to be active in different domains, adding that the ministry is ready to solve all the problems on the ground in order to stop violence as soon as possible. The State Ministry for Reconciliation Affairs is ready to solve all the issues that are hindering the United Nations mission. If their intention is sincere so that they can have an effective role in stopping the violence and holding responsible those who are carrying it out on the ground. In a statement, the Foreign and Expatriates Ministry has said that news media reported over the past two days news that had to do with ministry employees who chose to leave their work within Syrian diplomatic missions and head to a specific Arab capital that has been known for financing and encouraging such kind of employees to defect on the return for offers, the nature of which is no more a secret and which many inside and outside the ministry have rejected. The ministry pointed out that Abdel Latif Adabar is Syria's ambassador to the United Arab Emirates and he is under review in Damascus at the ministry's request for consultation and has not been on duty since the 4th of last June. As to Lamia al-Hariri, she neither before nor at present has carried the title of Syria's ambassador. She is a diplomat who works at the embassy in Cyprus and temporarily manages the affairs of embassy pending the appointment of an official charge affair or ambassador. The statement also made it clear that Mohammed Tahsin al-Faqir enjoys no diplomatic status and works as an administrative employee at the embassy in Oman. His mission at the embassy terminated on May 21st and he is to retire in a few months. He has no security status at all. The ministry affirmed that it has adopted the legal, behavioral, and diplomatic measures applicable accordingly, adding that the Syrian concerned embassies are working regularly without any interruption in service of the Syrian citizens in those countries. A Syrian government delegation comprising several ministers held a meeting yesterday with Iranian officials to outline bilateral cooperation in the economic services and energy domains in order to realize the best results. During his meeting with the delegation, Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Barsali he affirmed his country's support for Syria and facing a war that targets its role and position expressing full confidence in Syria's ability to overcome this crisis. On his part, Deputy Prime Minister for Services Affairs Omar Ghalawiji referred to the political economic information and media assault Syria exposed to, which aims at undermining the will of the Syrian people. He affirmed that pressures and threats would only increase the Syrian people's cohesion and determination to go ahead with reforms and combat terrorism. The two sides denounce the misleading campaign that targets the Syrian people's ability, affirming the need for joint action to confront the challenges facing the countries. Twelve Iraqis were killed as a helicopter crashed with armed clashes intensified during the last two days northeast of Iraq. Our men opened fire at a helicopter, forcing it to have an emergency landing, as 11 policemen were killed following clashes near Bakuba. This came on the wake of a series of attacks which killed 116 Iraqis and wounded dozens of others. Finally, Turkish warplanes bombarded Tindil Mountains and villages at the foot of mountains in Iraq. Turkish jets have bombarded Saragola and Kotekian villages at 11 p.m. The bombardment has lasted for some hours. There is no report about the number of casualties and the attacks. 
Turkey jets bombardment of the regions was intensified after Kurdistan workers' party rebels dwelling in Qandil Mountains reportedly killed 30 Turkish soldiers. With this, we end our news bulletin for today. For more information about Syria and the region, you can visit our website in English, syrianline.sy. Up next, the latest.